Okay, welcome to the uh, Sirius seminar class today. My name is Jerry Hahn. I'm with Sirius, and it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Syed Hussein. He's a postdoctoral researcher in the Department of Computer Science here at Purdue. He's also where he also received his PhD in December of 2018. His research interests broadly lie in network and system security with a focus on the fundamental improvement of security and privacy anal analysis of emerging networks and cyber physical systems, including cellular networks and Internet of Things. His papers have received numerous awards. He's been inducted twice into the Hall of Fame Mobile Security Research and his contribution in identifying 20 or more protocol flaws in 4G and 5G cellular networks. So with that, I'll just turn it over to Saeed and let him get started. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry, for the nice introduction. Uh, thank you all for, uh, for, for having me here. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about automated reasoning of security and privacy of cellular networks. So as you know that uh, when complex network protocols are designed, security is often considered as an afterthought, as a result of which there are uh, missing security and privacy guarantees under specifications and ambiguities in the technical designs. So these, all these problems uh, lead to the critical vulnerabilities which the adversary exploit and perform attacks to the design and real deployments. Not only that, like we have seen when a new generation protocol or system comes in, it, gar it guarantees better security posture than the previous generations. But many of the functional, due to backward compatibility, many of the functionalities have been adopted from previous generations to new generations. As a result of which vulnerabilities in those inherited components also exist in new generations. Also, there are new security features for newer generations, but those security features have not been undergone rigorous security evaluation. So all these vulnerabilities eventually go down to the real deployments. Apart from that, we have seen that deployments deviate from the technical design specifications. This is because of uh, like oversimplification of complex network protocol specifications of poor input sanitizations. So my research addressed these problems with fundamental enhancement in the investigation of security and privacy analysis of a system, from starting from analyzing technical designs, evaluating implementations, and building high assurance defenses. So towards this, uh, I, in my PhD, I have worked on three closely researched directions. First, I have developed formal verification frameworks for analyzing the technical designs of 4G and 5G cellular network protocols. Secondly, I have also developed static and dynamic analysis frameworks to evaluate if the deployments deviate from the standards. I have also built some run runtime monitoring systems for traditional and IoT systems. And finally, I have developed defense mechanisms for both cellular networks and IoT systems. So my research, all of my research is grounded on developing techniques uh, for formal verification, pro using formal verification, program analysis, software testing, and applied cryptography. So, today's talk, I'll mainly foc I'll be mainly focusing on the adversarial testing framework uh, that we have used for analyzing 4G and 5G cellular network protocols. Uh, then I will talk about a, like three novel side channel attacks that we have identified through a dedicated probabilistic reasoning technique. And finally, I will talk about a software fuzzing technique. Uh, for, for verifying the implementation when the binary instrumentation is hard and code coverage information is missing. So as you know that cellular network in, uh, are national critical infrastructure. It is widely being used not only for personal communication, but also it enables connectivity for billions of IoT devices, which further enables ser critical services such as smart cities, connected vehicles, telemedicine, also critical services like smart grid electricity distribution. It is also used for broadcasting public safety messages. For instance, we have seen that in 2018, a ballistic missile alert was sent in Hawaii. Though the message was sent mistakenly, but it created a huge chaos among the people. So, um, so critical vulnerabilities in such infrastructures can be exploited by the adversaries to perform different security and privacy related attacks, including broadcasting such fake emergency alert messages. So as you can see that it is crucial to analyze the technical designs and deployments uh, so that these technical, the, the problems and critical vulnerabilities in the technical designs not eventually trickle down to the deployments. 
So like for in case of 5G, it is better to analyze these 5G technical designs before it gets deployed at a mass scale by 2020. So before going into the details of my work, let's first see what are the existing threats identified by the previous work. So one of the notorious issues in 4G and 5G cellular networks is the identity catching attacks. So by identity is the, uh, the identity, I mean that a unique identity of a cellular device, uh, the, we call it IMSI or International Mobile Subscriber Identity. identity. And once it is disclosed, disclosed in plain text, the adversary can use that and perform man in the middle attack or can eavesdrop your conversation. And even, that, even after that, it can track your location. So later on, researchers have shown that even this IMZ is kept secret, but also can be replaced by the temporary identifier called TMSI or temporary mobile subscriber identity. Still, the adversary can track your location. Some other researchers have shown that uh, lack of authentication for the data plane messages, uh, you can perform like DNS redirection attacks. So all of these previous work, they have either used clever intuitions, but most of them has at least one of these following limitations. First, either they do not have any systematic approach uh, for analyzing the protocol, or sometimes they have some systematic approach, but they do not have any adversarial assumptions. And these approaches are mainly geared to towards analyzing the performance and reliability. And some other work, they are specifically focused on very like analyzing the previous generations in an ad hoc manner. So in this work, we try to address this fall falling problem, like whether we can systematically verify the design of 4G and 5G network protocols with respect to proposed security and privacy guarantees. So for analyzing any network protocols or systems, the first challenge is the lack of formal specification. So as we have seen that uh, RFCs or technical designs of cellular networks, they're written in natural languages, which actually induce like under specification, misinterpretation or ambiguities. The second challenge is the protocol complexity. As you know that cellular network protocols are stateful. Also there are multiple participants and multi multiple sub procedures which are intertwined which makes the analysis uh, scalability challenges. And another challenge is the obtaining the formal requirements, like what are the security and privacy goals that the system wants to ensure. So there is no formal list of our uh, compiled version of these requirements. Another challenge is that all these network protocols and systems are closed source. So we cannot use any white box approaches. And uh, final challenge is the legal barrier. Like these network operators, uh, uh, they, they purchase the licensed spectrum and they operate on these uh, like licensed spectrum. So if we have to test these networks, uh, we cannot actually send these packets in this licensed spectrum. And it is not allowed, not even in US, but from other part of the countries. So as I proceed, I will show how we have addressed uh, all of these challenges. So before going into details, let's first see uh, like what is the cellular device and uh, what is the cellular network architecture. So in cellular context, a device is called user equipment or UE. Each device has a unique identity called IMEI or International Mobile Equipment Identity. To get this, to get the cellular connectivity, the network operator provides a SIM card, which stores the master secret key. And a unique identifier, it is called, as I said, like IMSI, International Mobile Subscriber Identity, which is for 4G. And the counterpart for 5G is the SUPI or Subscription Permanent Identifier. So though the IMSI or SUPI, this, this identifier can be exposed in plain text, but master secret key will never be exposed in plain text. Now let's see, uh, in the context of uh, cellular network, a geographical area is divided into hexagonal cells where each cell is served by a base station. Multiple such adjacent cells consist of a registration area. So the base station works as an intermediary between the device and the core networks. The core network has multiple components or multiple nodes, but for this uh, talk, like I'll be focusing mainly on AMF or application mobility management function for 5G, which manages the registration, deregistration, and paging procedures. It means that the connection establishment, disconnection, and the mobility management. <clears throat> so for, for analyzing the, uh, the technical design, one of the key techniques is the model checking. So let me show how it works. So the high level idea is to check the model of a system against some uh, properties. It could be security and privacy properties that 
whether the model works perfectly fine with the given, against the given properties. So by model, I mean that the regular behavior system, behavior of the system uh, represented abstractly with some kind of graph representation or finite state machines. So the model checker takes this uh, abstract model uh, or the graph representation of the system and properties and checks uh, whether there is any path in the graph that the property gets violated. If not, we are good. But if there is any path where the property gets violated, then the model checker provides a counter example. So it means a sequence of steps that an attacker can take to perform uh, some kind of attacks. So for our analysis, we consider a dollar via style attacker model. So let's see how it, uh, what is this kind of model like dollar via attacker model. So for, for the uh, internal communication between the in layers of the uh, device, we consider the channel, the internal com uh, communication is private. Also the communication between the base station and the core network, it is considered private because it doesn't use any uh, 5G or 4G network. It is, it happens through like a uh, secure tunnel. So the communication channel between the device and the base station, it is, it, we consider public communication channel. That means it can be influenced by the adversary. So let's see, now let's see what are the adversarial capabilities in this context. So adversary sits man in the middle, middle between the uh, cellular device and the base station and core network. So the adversary actually is treated as an environment variable. That means uh, the model checker or the, the system consider a, it as an environment, random environment variable. It chooses whether the, it is an adversarial turn or not. So if it is an adversarial turn, the adversary can drop the message. It can also modify the type and content of the message. Also adversary can act as an impersonator uh, for the legitimate participant. But note that according to this dollar via adversary model, the adversary cannot encrypt or decrypt the messages if it doesn't know the key. So the key insight of our analysis is that while like the, pro the properties that we want to verify for, for 4G and 5G cellular systems, they have some common characteristics. What are they? First is the temporal ordering of events. So let me give you an example. Let's say you are a Purdue employee, a Purdue student, and you want to access the Purdue resources like uh, uh, machine, Purdue machine. So first you have to authenticate uh, yourself and then you can access the machine. So the authentication comes first before you access the resources. So this is called temporal ordering of events. Uh, second characteristic is the cryptographic constructs, which means that secrecy, authenticity, observation equivalence, these kind of properties that we want to check. And another property is the linear integer arithmetic. For instance, the sequence number, which is used to prevent replay attacks, like SQN, and it has a specific checks. So the intuition is that the model checker, the general purpose model checker, they are good at reasoning the temporal trace properties and linear integer arithmetic properties. Whereas the cryptographic protocol verifier can uh, efficiently argue about the cryptographic constructs. Now the question is, how can we leverage the capabilities of these two different uh, protocol verifier? So I will show you how we can actually combine them in our system. So here is the high level idea of the 5G reasoning framework. From the technical designs of 4G and 5G network protocols, we built the abstract model of the cellular device, base station, and the core network. And combining them, we call it abstract cellular protocol model. Then, with the abstract cellular protocol model, we combine or we incorporate the adversarial threats so that we can reason about the adversarial actions. And we call it threat instrumented model. This model is uh, then given to the model checker. Now, model checker needs another input, that is the properties. But there is no formal list of properties given by the specifications or the technical design documents. So for this, we resort to conformance test suites provided, provided by the uh, standard body. So conformance test suites means that there is a set of unique test cases and those that are related to security and privacy, we translate them into like desired property. Also we infer or uh, extract the informal properties from the technical specifications and technical requirements documentations. Then we feed all these properties to the model checker one by one. So model checker, if the model checker finds that there is no violation of while well, checking a property, then we are good. So there is no such uh, counterexample. There is no problem in the system. But if there is a problem in the system, 
then we'll get a counterexample. And then we take this counterexample to the cryptographic protocol verifier to rule out some of the, uh, like the spurious counterexamples. Like in the initial model, we have, we have an assumption that we replace all the cryptographic related messages with their plain text counterparts. So because of this abstraction, there might be a spurious example. So we, if the cryptographic protocol verifier adjudicates that the, the, all the attack steps are valid, then the attack is doable in real life. But if there is, is not uh, any, any kind of spurious uh, attack steps, then ad, we, we, uh, we use that the result from the cryptographic protocol verifier and add that as an invariant uh, to the desired property so that that attack steps will not be uh, spurious attack steps will not be uh, further in, uh, like introduced in our uh, model checking part. So with this adversarial testing framework, we have identified 11 new attacks for the 5G networks, uh, uh, five of, five, also five inherited attacks we have identified, which have been uh, adopted from the 4G networks. Uh, a previous version of our, of our framework, we call it 4G uh, LT inspector, uh, that identified 10 new attacks uh, for the 4G networks and nine prior attacks. And implications of these attacks are ranging from overbilling, location tracking, uh, IMZ, TMZ exposure, uh, artificial chaos, and uh, service profiling. So as I promised, like, uh, uh, like the adversary can exploit the vulnerabilities of the cellular network protocols and send fake emergency alert message. Let me show you a demo for this one. So here, uh, with this software defined radio peripheral, I have set up a fake base station, which will try to send a fake emergency alert message to, to my device. As you can see, that device is already connected to 4G LTE. Now I have, uh, I have just started my fake base station, and it will try to send this fake message. Yes, as you can see that this emergency warning, so this is the message I have set, not so much scary. Uh, but as you can see that this message, uh, probably you can, you, have re you can receive this kind of emergency alert messages and you should not believe this message at all. But this can create, like if the message is scary, it can create a huge panic among the people like, like we have seen uh, in, in the case of Hawaii. So um, all of these findings, we have sh responsibly disclosed these findings uh, to the cellular standard body. We call it GSMA, and they have acknowledged our findings. And a number of changes uh, will be coming in the next release, 16, uh, for the different layers and the security architecture specifications. Also, uh, Intel has used our tool internally, and they have identified a couple of vulnerabilities. And Qualcomm also has shown uh, uh, interest to use our tool. Also, it has got wide coverage from the mass media and technical outlets. So as, we, as you have seen that while analyzing the protocol, we have used some kind of high level protocol abstractions, like high level, we have designed or modeled the high level protocol flow of the system. But there is a kind of trade off between the fine grained modeling and uh, the comp completeness of the test. Like you may have false positive or false negative. Like if you have very high level a view of the protocol. But as you model the protocol in a more fine granular way, you might have more states. As you have more states or more complete view of the system, you might be able to find more critical vulnerabilities such as side channel problems. But the problem is that the model checker will explode whenever you give such kind of huge uh, or complete model of the system. It will like fall into a state space explosion problem. So in this uh, like next work, I will show that how we can uh, like identify side channel vulnerabilities in a, in a particular sub procedure of cellular system using a specific probabilistic reasoning technique. So let me first give you a high level overview that how paging procedure works for, the, for 4G and 5G networks. So as, as, as you know that whenever you have to get a cellular connectivity, you will have a SIM card for your device. And that SIM card has a unique identity, uh, IMSI or International Mobile Subscriber Identity. But to protect the illegitimate exposure of such critical identity, the standard body asks that 
whenever the device connects with the network after this mutual authentication and connection establishment procedure, the network assigns a temporary identity called TMSI to the device and it is shared secretly so that uh, no one is able to extract that. <clears throat> okay, now, now you are connected, your phone is connected to the core network and you might have cellular connectivity like incoming and outgoing messages. So you will remain connected. But after a while, your phone will, be, will go to the idle state if you don't have any cellular act activity. So if, you, if your mobile phone or cellular device is in the idle state and if you have some kind of incoming services like phone calls or SMS, then how the core network or the network will let you know that there is some kind of incoming services for you. The core network sends a paging request message to the base station to which your device was last seen connected. And then the base station broadcast the paging message to all its uh, cellular sus subscribers in its uh, cell. Note that this paging message does not have any kind of encryption and does not have any authentication. So receiving this paging message, the device checks the records in the paging message and each of the record in the paging message is a tuple that consists of the temporary identifier of the device and the indication of the service type. If it is PS or packet switch, it will the service will happen through 4G network. If it is a CS or circuit switch, the sur service will happen through circuit switch networks. And receive, wh while checking this list of records sequentially, when the device will hit its own IMZ or t sorry TMZ, the device will connect back to the core network. Now let's see in this idle state, how the device will receive this paging message or notification of incoming services. So during this idle time, the device, majority of the time the device sleeps and it periodically wakes up. So if a message or paging message or notif this notification comes during the sleep time, the device will not be able to capture that message. But if it comes in the monitoring phase, the device will able to receive and respond to that message. The, the time at which the device wakes up periodically, we call it paging occasion or paging frame index. So without loss of generality, let's assume that the time domain of 4G and 5G networks, it is divided into 128 system frames, where each frame is of a length of 10 millisecond. Now, the question is that which device will wake up at which system frame, how it is decided. Basically, it is decided based on your last seven bits of the IMZ of your de device. So if two devices have same, I same last seven bits, then they will wake up at the same time. Uh, so can you see any, any problem or any issue of this uh, design? Apparently, it may appear that uh, this is a very good design in terms of energy optimization and performance. Okay, so okay, let me show that, like what could, be, what could go wrong? So the, the problem is that the IMZ of your device is fixed for the entire lifetime of your SIM card. That means the paging occasion of your device is fixed, right? So knowing the phone number, if I give phone call to your number, so first thing will happen is that there will be a paging message generated by the base station of your device. So let me show like what could go wrong if I just know your phone number whether the attacker can identify your paging occasion, and if the attacker can identify your paging occasion, whether they can track your location. So for this, we have developed uh, a side channel attack called tracking via paging message distribution. The first, at the first step, uh, the attacker passively like observes the paging message distribution for all 20, 128 system frames. This paging message distribution shows that there are different uh, paging messages for different cellular subscribers in your cell area. Now, knowing the phone number uh, of the victim, the attacker makes a number of phone calls. The high level idea of this attack is that how can we skew this paging distribution? So after making, let's say, n number of phone calls, at, after, after that, you'll find there is a particular system frame where there is a significant number of paging message arrivals than the rest of the others. As you can see that if, if that is the case, that means that system frame 
is the paging occasion for the victim. If you can like infer that, that means the victim was present in that cell area. Also, it exposed some of last seven bits of the victim's INSA. So now the question is, how many phone calls are required by the attacker to perform this like attack or identify your presence of a target area and your paging occasion? For this, we developed a likelihood-based analysis where we exploit these informations. As you can see, a paging message may contain 16 paging records for 16, up to 16 cellular devices, where there could be paging uh, like packet switch indication of service or circuit switch indication of service. Another, um, like the timing information we exploit is that after making a phone call, the probability of receiving a paging message between time interval T1 and T3 is significantly higher than the time interval at T4. Also, we exploit the base rate of the packet switch and service switch records while we have we captured this paging distribution. So utilizing all this information, we compute the likelihood Li that, it, that the I the victim's PFI. I means out of 120 frame, I frame is the victim's paging frame index or paging occasion. We also compute the likelihood when victim is not present in that particular target area. So the adversary then identifies the victim's paging occasion when likelihood of AI is significantly higher than the rest of, for the rest of the other system frames. And uh, using this analysis technique, uh, the adversary can require up to three to seven phone calls to identify victim's paging occasion. As, as, as you can see that paging occasion also expose victim's IMSI, like you can use that for tracking the uh, a victim. So now, um, when we reported this uh, vulnerability to the cellular standard body in 2018, they actually tried to fix this problem very quickly. So this, they have used like paging, they have decided that paging occasion should be decided based on the temporary identifier of the device instead of the unique identifier like IMSI, which is permanent. But the solution they proposed at the time, like in 2018, we were kind of skeptical. Like this solution might be broken in future with some, with some like another attacks. Like this is a classic example which shows that if you do, like fix your solution without rigorous evaluation, security evaluation, things may go wrong in another time. So with our 5G regional framework in two, that is published in 2019, we have shown that these uh, like solution or fix can be broken and still the adversary can get your TMZ and identify your location. So uh, now another funny story that uh, the motivation of this, the second problem comes from the another uh, interesting story. Like in 2018, when we had a chance to go to Qualcomm uh, to like help them like recreating some of the attacks that we have identified uh, for using our uh, 4G LT inspector framework, uh, one of the guy from the 3GPP, actually they challenged us that 5G networks does not uh, expose your unique identifier IMZ in plain text. They use public key encryption to make it secret. So they challenge us whether we can break it. So from that, actually, we we have uh, like or we have get motivated to to see like whether the IMZ can be broken for the uh, for the for the five G networks. So exploiting this uh, the torpedo attack torpedo vulnerabilities. Like we can see that the IMZ, which is represented as a 15 digits binary dec decimal coded number, it is represented as a 60 bit, uh, like 40, 49 bit binary numbers. So out of these 49 bits, the first six digits or first 18 bits of your IMZ can be easily identified with a service called HLR lookup service, which these first six, six digits of your uh, IMSI or first 18 bits basically says that which network operators and which country your SIM card belongs. So in this case, as you can see, 310 is the mobile country code, which is for USA, and 260, uh, which is the network code for T-Mobile. And using the top of the attack, we know the last seven bits of the IMSA. So out of 49 bits, the adversary knows 25 bits. That means adversary has to crack, like, like has to find this, the rest of the 24 bits. So this is kind of a guessing attacks. So for this guessing, we need to build an oracle. 
So we exploit the registration procedure or the connection establishment procedure for the 5G networks to build this Oracle. The high level idea is that the attacker will guess an IMZ and check whether that guess IMZ is valid. And if the IMZ is valid, then whether it belongs to the victim. Now let's see how it works. So the adversary set up, sets up a man in the middle relay between the victim and the core network and legitimate base station. So man in, the middle, man in the middle relay or MITM relay consists of two components. One is the fake base station and the fake uh, cellular device. Now the fake cellular device of the man in the middle relay sends a registration request message or connection establishment request message and it guesses the IMZ and encrypt with the public key of the core network. Now if that guessed IMZ does not belong to the, any subscriber of, the, of that network, the network will send a registration request reject message. So from that, it can identify that the guessed IMZ is not kind of valid or not for the, for the victim. Now the attacker tries with another guessed IMZ. And this time, if it receives an authentication challenge, it relays that message to the target or victim. Now the adversary wants to see whether the victim can solve that challenge or not. If the victim cannot solve the challenge, that means this authentication challenge is not for him. But if the victim can solve the challenge, now the guessed IMZ actually belongs to the target or victim. So this is how we actually cracked the rest of the 24 bits of the IMZ for the victim. So uh, we have uh, like these kind of side channel attacks like Torpedo also enable uh, another side channel attacks for the 4G network for retrieving the IMZ of the user device. As, as uh, previous work, we reported this vulner vulnerability and GSMA has acknowledged uh, the findings. They have proposed a defense which didn't work uh, later uh, and we have identified that uh, using our 5G regional framework. Also, this work has got uh, like a similar kind of mass media attention from the technical like outlets. So as we have used these formal analysis frameworks and probabilistic reasoning techniques, like the, 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 most of the attacks that we have identified, uh, actually they are active attacks set up by the fake base stations. Let's see how it works. So when the cellular device first wants to connect to the core network, they like searches or scans the nearby areas for the presence of the base station to whom it can connect. Also base station at the same time periodically broadcast it messages like the system information block messages and must, there are different types of broadcast messages that are sent in plain text and they do not have any identification, sorry, authentication. So this lack of authentication and lack of uh, encryption can be exploited by the adversary to set up a fake base station. So fake base station mimics or impersonates as a legitimate base station and emits these similar kind of messages. Since it doesn't have any authentication, it, no, it, not, it will not be identified. So the idea is that lack of authentication and encryption, also the message, the broadcast message is sent with higher signal strength. So naturally the device will lose connectivity from the legitimate base station and will connect to the fake base station. Now the fake base station will request for your IMZ. This happens for 4G networks. And in 4G networks, the device will respond with IMZ like it, it provides this IMZ and sent in, in plain text. But in 5G, as I have said, like 5G is kind of more secure than 5, 4G. It tries to encrypt that message like IMZ uh, with the public key of the core network. That, is, that means the adversary can now uh, cannot uh, see the, the, this IMZ of the victim device. But still the adversary can perform like different kind of denial service attacks. For example, authentication reject or reject message or registration reject message, which cause the device to go into the kind of numb state. It, until you restart your phone, you'll not be able to connect it to the core network. So, so as you can see that lack of authentication is the root cause of, for the most of the active attacks uh, performed by the fake base stations. So how can we solve this problem? So basically this 3GPP standard body considered the possibility of using public infrastructure based solution to solve this issue as impractical due to some technical challenges. But, but this is the first work we will show that, that public infrastructure can be still realizable by solving the technical and not technical challenges. 
So let me show you the, the high level idea of this solution. So the core network has uh, assumed that this home sub server, which stores the, the certificate, which is uh, like the self-signed, and the core network will assign, the home server in the core network will assign certificate to the MME or AMF, that is the mobility management function or the entity in the core network. And it is signed by the core network. The certificate of the MME will be signed by the core network. The, the, uh, core, the MME and AMF or the MMF will assign the certificate for the base station. And then when the base station will broadcast these messages, it will include all these certificate chains and uh, add the signature of these messages. So when the cellular device will receive that message, like if they receive the fake messages from the base station, it will, uh, it will be able to identify the legitimate ones and uh, the fake ones. So this is the high level idea, but there are certainly this, and apparently this solution is pretty straightforward, but what are the technical challenges. The first technical challenge is the certificate chain length. As you can see, there are number of intermediate nodes. Uh, the certificate chain will be long. The second challenge is the how can we incorporate the certificate rev revocation. And finally, the signature generation for the messages. If the signature, signature generation takes too much time, then there will be like uh, problems of scheduling the periodic messages that are broadcast by the base stations. Also, that like signature generation, if it takes too much extra bytes, then it's another problem. So for addressing these challenges, we proposed an optimized PKI scheme in which we have uh, introduced different levels of optimization. First is the PKI level optimization in which we propose a lightweight design of the certificate for the cellular network, which uh, reduces all these unnecessary fields uh, introduced by the traditional X509 based certificate. Second is the protocol level optimization in which we minimize the number of transmissions of this uh, high length or long length certificate. And finally, we introduce cryptographic scheme level optimizations in which we try to reduce the size of the signature by aggregating multiple signatures to an offline online based signature generation schemes. Now, the non-technical challenge is the roaming. Let's say you have a SIM card from the T-Mobile, now you go to Europe and you are getting connectivity from, Vo from Vodafone. So how the base station will get certificate from the T-Mobile's core network? So it's kind of a roaming challenge and uh, like the, it can be, probably can be solved by some kind of mutual authentication or communication between the two network operators separated by the, like the, uh, like two different uh, region, but Essentially, we have shown in the paper that with the introduction of the eSIM or electronic SIM card, this roaming can be solved. So this work actually uh, also got high, high visibility, visibility from the uh, technical mass media and we had a chance to talk to the, talk to the FCC, Federal Communication uh, Council, and they were pushing uh, for this solution, whether it can be incorporated for the next generation cellular networks. So now as, as we have seen that uh, we can use this kind of formal verification framework or uh, to analyze these 4G and 5G cellular network protocols to identify the possible uh, problems and fix before it gets deployed. Also we have shown some kind of uh, defense mechanisms against the fake base station attacks. But still if you secure the cellular connectivity between your, uh, the cellular modem or baseband processor of your uh, smartphone and base station and the core network, there is another processor in your smartphone that is running on the, all the general purpose applications like text, messaging, like audio, video, all kinds of applications. And this application processor communicates with the baseband processor with one of the interface called AT interface through AT commands. So let's say your phone app wants to make a phone call and let's say you dial some number and that command goes to the application processor, then application processor translates the, these commands with the AT commands and then the call happen. Interestingly, we have found that when a smartphones are connected to peripherals like USB or Bluetooth, uh, it allows or accepts AT commands. So what can go wrong? So if there is any malicious uh, peripheral like USB or malicious Bluetooth peripheral, even like the, as you know that Bluetooth connections are inherently vulnerable to man in the middle attack. 
the adversary can inject valid or invalid AD comments. Though a previous work have sh has shown that the misuse and abuse of valid AD commands since AT interface is a critical entry point for the baseband processor, invalid AT commands can cause catastrophic problems such as private information disclosures. So in this work, we'll show that how it, we can systematically analyze the correctness and robustness of the baseband related AT commands execution pro process for the modern smartphones. So there are certain challenges for such systematic analysis. One may assume that we can uh, use static analysis or dynamic analysis. But the problem is that most of the firmwares uh, for these cellular devices are not available. Even they are available, there are some kind of vendor specific of obfuscation which uh, like makes these static analysis and dynamic analysis uh, fail. Also, we have like tried to use binary instrumentation which is a useful like first step for uh, fuzzing like, like well-known fuzzing techniques such as AFL, but it also fails because of these previous two problems like obfuscation and unavailability of the firmware. So we address all these challenges with our new uh, grammar-based evolutionary fuzzing framework. Let me show how it works. So first we take a set of uh, like 80 grammars which define uh, how the AT command should, uh, should be given. And we feed that to the evolutionary evolution module, which systematically changes the, the grammars, uh, like using mutation and crossover techniques, to find the set of invalid AT grammars. Note that this invalid AT grammar is a class of invalid AT command instances. So after this mutation and crossover, we feed that uh, like uh, we feed that grammar or uh, like invalid AT grammar to the evaluation module. So the evaluation module generate the concrete instance of this grammar and inject to the uh, device under test with AT command injector. The AT command uh, after the execution of each of these AT command, the phone responds either with the OK or uh, error response. So from this execution, we precisely take the timing information of the, of the AT command execution. And we use this timing information as a loose indicator of the code coverage. If it takes higher time, then we assume that we are, we can infer that it actually explore more, more number of basic blocks of, 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 the, of the device. So using this timing information and another is the de uh, detection of the disruptions. That means after execution of an AT command, it may happen that your cellular connectivity uh, goes completely off. So using this information, we compute the score for each of these AT grammar and uh, feed uh, or return this score to the evaluation module. The best scored grammars are selected for the parents for the next round, which goes through again the mutation and crossover uh, session. And at the end of the session, we'll get the new population for the subsequent rounds. Now the interesting thing about this AT fuzzer is that after end of this fuzzing process, we'll get a set of AT grammars in, instead of concrete AT command instances. And each of these AT grammar represents a se set of invalid instance of concrete AT command. That means like if you have a problem in one of the instances, the other instance will have the same like uh, problems or same effect. Uh, for the execution of this AT command. So, so, so with this framework, we have identified like four invalid AT grammars uh, for the Bluetooth interface and 11 invalid AT grammars for the USB. And let me show you one of the attacks uh, that we have identified through our framework. So assume that your phone is not connected to any uh, USB peripherals or Bluetooth peripherals. Now, as, you, as soon as you are connected uh, to your headphones or your car play of your car, uh, the adversary can exploit the vulnerabilities of this Bluetooth connection and inject invalid AT commands. So let me show you a demo for this one. So your phone is connected to the 4G LTE service. Uh, now, from the Bluetooth peripheral, uh, we'll send a invalid AT command, like this is the AT plus CIMI 
semicolon ABCD, which is an invalid command. And using this invalid command, I will get uh, the IMSI of, of the uh, phone that is connected to the Bluetooth peripheral. So once this IMSI is exposed, uh, then as I've shown in the, my previous work that uh, it can be useful for man in the middle attack or tracking your location. So we reported all these vulnerabilities to the affected vendors like Samsung and Google, and they have blocked the USB and Bluetooth modem interface uh, for the AT common execution. Also, they have assigned uh, like CVEs, and uh, like, like previous works, we also got uh, coverage from the mass media outlets. So in today's talk, I have uh, mainly uh, focused on these three works. Also, I touched on slightly the, uh, the defense mechanisms against the fake base stations. Uh, so, uh, like taking into account all my like previous work and my kind of vision for my uh, pre future work, I would like to first see like whether we can develop like a scalable and uniform verification framework for the entire 5G cel cellular ecosystems. Let me show um, what we have solved and what are the remaining and what are the challenges for this one? So as you can see the, from the, this protocol stack, uh, like we, for now, as of now, we have analyzed only two layers of the cellular protocol stack for the, uh, for the cellular device, which enable connectivity between the cellular device and the core network through the base station. There are, of course, there are other layers and vulnerabilities in other layers may have critical uh, like problems, security and privacy problems. Also, like in 5G, you will have connectivity of uh, different access technologies. Like uh, you can actually access to the core network through Wi-Fi. Also, whenever you make a phone call, uh, like from T-Mobile to AT&T, the T-Mobile and AT&T, they have to communicate with each other. So there could be some vulnerabilities in such uh, inter or cross-network com cross communication. Also, 5G will enable network slicing and it may have problem that unauthenticated excess of network size of any services. So taking all this into account, I would like to first uh, like set up or develop a uniform verification or a scalable verification framework, uh, which analyze the technical design of the 5G uh, cellular ecosystems. As a first step, I would like to see like whether it is possible to automatically extract the formal model from the natural language specification. And I can also use this formal model to check whether there is any inconsistency in the formal spec. So the, the another challenge that we have that uh, how can I scale my previous approaches for analyzing this entire system? So we can use uh, or leverage the compositional verification in which we can divide the whole ecosystem into a smaller component and analyze in isolation and then finally combine them using assume guarantee style reasoning. I'd also like to like build verification framework for the deployments and implementations. But, but the challenge is that the, the final state machine or the model for the cellular device or the core networks are unknown. Then how can we actually solve this challenge for uh, making, making it useful for our analysis. So we may use back box techniques like fuzzing uh, to like extract these finite set machines automatically from the device and the network core network components. And like we can infer this uh, like as a, as a hypothesis or inferred finite state machine for these uh, back box systems. And uh, like as I have shown that our earlier analysis only uses like uh, property guided analysis or reasoning techniques, uh, I would like to also see how, can, how we can actually combine these property guided analysis with differential testing. And uh, after all this analysis, we'd like to, of course we'd like to uh, like uh, do the root cause analysis and develop the def defenses for the problems that we'll, we'll be identifying. So as for instance, uh, we have probably all of us have experienced these kind of spam calls, like uh, by the robo robocalls. So there is no such straightforward solution uh, so far we have seen. So the, one of the main problems for these spam calls is the lack of end-to-end -end authentication. Let's see that what is the current status. So 
the authentication happens between your phone and the core network. But let's say your colleague is from another network. So then there is an authentication or communication between the like two network operators and authentication, mutual authentication between the colleague and that particular uh, like the core networks. So there, to make sure that there is no spam calls or robocalls, we have to like propose some defense which ensures end-to-end -end authentication between the caller and colleague. And finally, I would like to like see whether we can uh, like generate the reference implementation from the formal spec. So as, as you know that 5G will enable many different critical services. So as of my future work, I'd like to uh, like also analyze the security and privacy of those critical services, such as smart, smart grid electricity distributions, telemedicine, and connected vehicles. So another challenge will be coming for, this, uh, for the next generation cellular networks, such as 6G, which will enable like uh, terabytes of data uh, per second. As you have seen that 5G networks enables like gigahertz uh, like speed, but it comes with the cost of privacy uh, introduced by the smaller cells. Like we don't know what will happen like when we, it will enable like terabytes uh, like communication systems. And uh, like we'd like to see like whether our approach can be scaled for the next generation cellular networks. Also, I would like to continue my uh, like work uh, towards the safety, security, and privacy of IoT and cyber physical systems. But there are many different challenges because of heterogeneous IoT devices of different capabilities. For instance, like the devices for the smart home systems and uh, like industrial IoT. And they have different forms of connectivity. Like as you can see that some devices may get connected with first the coordinator, uh, then it may get connected with the phone which then eventually gets connected to the core network. So there are multiple hops, but some other devices may get connected through the Wi-Fi or access point of your home. And sometimes we have seen that uh, the coordinator works as an like Wi-Fi access point, which directly connects to the, uh, like the cloud, like bypassing the mobile phones. And some other cell, like Internet of Things devices gets directly connected to the core network using LTE or WLAN. So all, taking into account all these kind of heterogeneous things, like first I would like to see or analyze the individual components. Like for example, that something could go wrong in the IoT devices, like IoT firmwares, or, or a specific form of transport protocols. And finally, I would like to see like, whether I can analyze this whole IoT ecosystem, like, uh, like holistically that I have shown for the 5G networks. So as a concluding remark, uh, I have shown that how my research leverages formal verification, software testing, program analysis, and applied cryptography to systematically analyze the design and performance and can build high assurance defenses. Uh, I have mainly talked about our work 5G Reasoner, the adversarial testing framework, then I have shown the side channel problems using probabilistic reasoning technique and the fuzzing framework uh, for for verifying the implementations of a smartphone. And finally, I have also shown that how can we uh, scale our current approaches uh, and adapt it for the 5G and next generation cellular networks and IoT systems. With that, I conclude my talk, and I'll be happy to take any questions. Any questions? OK, well, thank you very much, Sad. We appreciate it. Thank you.